and to decide the issue in accordance with the applicable law. There is controversy as to whether this clause is valid or not. The law governing this clause is the Danubian Arbitration Law, given that this arbitration is taking place in Vindabona, Danubia. The relevant provisions of the Danubian Arbitration Law are Article 5, which uh, establishes the mandatory nature of Article 34, which provides the sole grounds for the setting aside of the arbitral award. However, the grounds of Article 34 of the Danubian Arbitration Law are narrow grounds of review. Those grounds are mandatory, those grounds are exclusive, and those grounds are exhaustive. It takes account of how hospitals concern that as a public hospital it is accountable to Equatorianian taxpayers. Yes, thank you. Good morning, distinguished members of the arbitral tribunal. My name is Anastasia Ifimova, and I'm going to represent Claymont in this case. This is the case where a respondent is trying to avoid arbitration at all costs and raises the following issues. First of all, respondent states that arbitral tribunal has no jurisdiction to hear this case. Secondly, respondent states that uh, framework and sales agreement does not cover claims arising out of sales and licensing agreement. And third, respondent states that in any case both disputes should be heard separately. Uh, I'm going to address this issue in the respective order. And my first submission is that the arbitral tribunal has jurisdiction over this case because the arbitration clause contained in Article 23.3 of the Framework and Sales Agreement is valid. And its validity is conditioned by several grounds. First of all, it is valid because it is contained in a contract which was negotiated and properly signed by the parties. And inclusion of the appeal and review mechanism does not invalidate the arbitration clause because many jurisdictions all over the world allow judicial review of arbitration awards. Arbitrability, work, or taste, or such contracts, and here comes the relevant uh, wording of the provision. Good, good morning, honorable members of the tribunal. Uh, my name is Daria Balic, and I represent the claimant on this case, speaking on the merits. As we have mentioned, I will need 14 minutes, reserving one minute for the rebuttal to make my submission. The case at hand is all about the inconsistent behavior of the respondent and, as it turned out, its attempt to, make, uh, to escape the liability for the breach of contract. So, in uh, 2011, the parties signed the sales and licensing agreement and the claimant, having fulfilled his obligations under the contract, never got the full payments for, from the respondent, uh, who now states that the contractual terms are not binding. And, however, the claimant, having revised the standard terms of 2011, informed the respondent of the overall of the standard terms, and the respondent never informed the claimant of any problems, of any issues uh, concerning the understanding or comprehending the text of the standard terms. Moreover, the sales and licensing agreement is not a contract for the sale of goods within the meaning of the CIDC. Now, Claimant wants the CIDC to be applied to the sales and licensing agreement in order to obtain $1.5 million that do not belong to it. I have three submissions to make following uh, the counsel for the opposing parties' uh, submissions. The first one is that the CIDC is not applicable to the sales and licensing agreement pursuant the choice of law clause. The second one is that Section 22 of the 2011 version of the standard terms does not lead to the application of the CIDC. Finally, the final issue here is if the sales and licensing agreement is a contract within the meaning of the CIDC and to the materials. Furthermore, the software and the materials are not inseparable in terms of fact. On, on the jurisdiction and on the uh, issue of the applicable law and on the, on the procedure part, I thank both parties. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Are we ready to start? Camera rolling. <laughs> so, before we formally commence the arbitration proceedings this afternoon, I uh, thought it would be, uh, be good if we could introduce ourselves. Um, I'll start with myself. Um, <clears throat> my name is Peter McQueen. Uh, I'm uh, from my accent. You can hear that I'm Australian. Uh, not American. I can formally um, commence these proceedings, these proceedings between Innovative Cancer Treatment Limited and Hope Hospital. Thank you. Good 
Uh, good afternoon, distinguished members of the Adusho Tribunal. My name is Anastasia Vino, and I'm going to represent respondent in this case. My submission will take 14 minutes, and one minute I will wait for the rebuttal. My client is a non-sophisticated party and who just wanted two things, functioning contract and functioning technology. However, it has got nothing. Therefore, on behalf of respondent, I have three main submissions to make. First of all, the arbitral tribunal has no jurisdiction over this case. Second, framework and sales agreement does not extend to cover claims arising out of the sales and licensing agreement. And third, in any case, most disputes cannot be heard within a single set of proceedings. So, my first submission is that the arbitral tribunal has no jurisdiction over this case because the arbitration clause contained in Article 23 of the framework and sales agreement is invalid due to the fact that, it is complete, uh, that uh, the party's initial intention was infringed when the claimant drafted a arbitration clause with completely inappropriate appeal and review mechanisms. Of course, the business relationship with respondent, claimant, in the sense of good cooperation, accommodated all the needs of respondent. Moreover, it fulfilled all of its contractual obligations. But now, it has to resort to arbitration to force respondent to fulfill its own contractual obligations. And moreover, to follow the steps of the dispute resolution clause, the respondent itself insisted upon. In the course of my submission, I will address the issues raised by the respondent in the same order. Namely, first, this tribunal has jurisdiction for the valid arbitration agreement contained in the Article 23 of the Framework and Sales Agreement. Second, the very same arbitration agreement also governs the claims arising out of the sales and licensing agreement. Finally, both claims should be heard in one single set of proceedings before this tribunal. Moving to the first point of my submission, contrary to respondent statements, the arbitration agreement contained in Article 23 of the Framework and Sales Agreement is valid, and the appeal and review mechanism. The main intention of the respondent to include the appeal and review mechanism into the dispute resolution clause was not to comply with the provisions of circular number 265. It is stated in procedural order number 2, record page 58, paragraph 10, that the respondent wanted to avoid public discussions regarding the substance of this case. Contract negotiations, as it provided a dispute resolution mechanism, which was requested by a respondent. It also provided a lenient payment schedule and a considerable discount. However, Respondent has never expressed any concern for one thing claimant actually insisted on, and that was the application of the July 2011 version of the standard terms. Claimant requests the tribunal today to hold that the CISG applies to all claims uh, arising under the sales and licensing agreement. To arrive to this conclusion, claimant provides to the tribunal three following submissions. And that is first, the July 2011 version of claimant standard terms has been validly incorporated into the sales and licensing agreement. Good afternoon, honorable members of the tribunal. My name is Dalia Babich and I represent the respondent on this case speaking on the merits. My submission will take 14 minutes, reserving one minute for the rebuttal. Following the structure that was named by the claimants, the respondent submits that the CIG is not applied to the contract since, first, the July 2011 version of standard terms and conditions was not validly included and incorporated into the contract and it simply didn't become part of the contract. Second is that uh, Section 22 of, uh, 2000, of standard terms uh, and conditions of sale of 2011 should not be applied since the only version that was included into the contract is the section is the standard terms of 2000 uh, and the uh, choice of law clause uh, of standard terms of 2000 should be applied to the contract. The third issue is that the sales and licensing agreement is out of the scope of the CISG since uh, the nature of the contract contradicts to the Article 3 of the CISG. Thank you. Honorable Tribunal, I would like to rebut on one point concerning the exclusion of the CISG application under Article 3.2, as was mentioned. 
motion by the opposing council. The Department parties agree upon um, how to proceed. Yes, Madam Arbitrator, we agree that respondent shall start with procedural issues followed by claimant, and then claimant shall start with the merits followed by the respondent. Each party preserves 14 minutes for the main presentation and one minute for the report. Okay. Yes, my co counsel, Mr. Chow Together we are representing respondent in this matter, Home Hospital. I will be speaking in regard of the procedural issues concerning, first, whether the tribunal has the jurisdiction to deal with the claims from the contract, and second, whether the claims should be heard in a single arbitration. After that, my co-counsel will be speaking in regard of the merits issue concerning the law of the code to the um, I would like to proceed my first submission, which is um, the tribunal has no jurisdiction to rule on any claim that is out of both contracts. My argument is separated into two, uh, two, two parts. The first one concerning the framework and sales agreement, and the second one concerning the sales agreement. Don't they provide different, sorry, seats? For the second? Yeah. Uh, for the sales and licensing yeah. agreement. For the sales and licensing agreement, the distribution clause contained in the 2011 standard is not, uh, is not incorporated either because um, the terms um, in both uh, dispute solution clauses in the sales and licensing agreement and the standard agreement have different um, uh, provisions. Uh, my submission will take 14 minutes and one minute. I will leave for the report. In this case, the respondent is trying to avoid arbitration at all costs and raises three main issues. First, the respondent states that the arbitral tribunal has no jurisdiction over this case. Second, the respondent states that framework and sales agreement does not extend to cover claims arising out of the sales and licensing agreement. And third, the respondent argues that both disputes cannot be heard within a single set of proceedings. 23.2 both parties shall have the right to bring any and all claims? Uh, yes, Mr. Abitrator. Uh, you refer me to the sales and licensing agreement. Yeah, 23.2, it's, I think, page 19. Yes, um, the parties have the right, but they are not obliged to bring any and all claims. All arbitration clauses uh, not employed. Um, do, do, you, do you think that um, it can, it, can has, it, it can have any bearing on, on your client's good faith? Um, there, um, it was respondent's um, intention to include such a review mechanism to, to the arbitration um, agreement. However, we, we, we must admit that it is invalid due to the, the exceeded uh, the, um, the extension of the ground. So the claimant states that CSG is applicable to the contract due to several reasons. First is that uh, the July version of standard terms and conditions was validly included into the contract and it became part of the contract and its contractual terms are binding. Second is that section 2 of the standard terms and conditions of 2011 uh, provides for the application of the CISG to the contract and third issue is that the sales and licensing agreement is within the scope of the CISG because it is a contract for the sale of goods. Of the CISG is valid and consequently the uh, third issue is that the sales and licensing agreement is a contract for the sale of goods in the sense of the CISG and it is within the scope of the CISG. The law to the sale and licensing agreement is uh, not CISG but rather maybe the regular law to achieve that, first point and submit to submission. The first is that uh, we are not arguing that uh, the software is good or not, but rather the sale and licensing agreement is not a sale of good covered by CSG. Uh, with that, I would now like to introduce to you uh, the teams and the panel that we have here uh, on the stage. Uh, and to my left, stage right, we have the National Law School of India University, Bangalore, from India.
we're very fortunate today to have a very distinguished panel uh, with us. Uh, chairing today's panel is Professor Dr. Johan Eru. Uh, joining Professor Eru in the panel is Professor Dr. Ingeborg Schwenzer uh, and Mr. Christopher Lau, SC. Before handing the session over to our chairman, uh, I would again ask for those that are entering the room to take your seats promptly uh, and to be very careful of the place settings, do not disturb them. One final request, please turn off your mobile phones. Thank you, Mr. President. Hello. A very good afternoon. My name is Ashwini Vaidhanika and I represent the respondent of the hospital in this present matter. Parties to this dispute negotiated into two contracts in 2008 and 2011, which for the convenience of this tribunal, I should refer to as the Framework Agreement and the SLB. I the counsel for respondent before moving back to consider the effect of Article 23, sub-Article 4. In relation to counsel for respondent's submissions regarding the necessity of an arbitration agreement to be mandatory, it is counsel for claimant's submission that although this was traditionally held to be the case, the trend in modern era has been to allow parties by exercise of their autonomy to arbitration. Both sides, we never really discussed the legal basis upon which this tribunal is going to decide which law applies. Could you briefly uh, elaborate on this question, very briefly, before we turn to the other points, please. Contract. So, is it your position that this tribunal is bound to apply the CISG if the parties did not validly hold on to it? It is our position that the CISG should be found to be presumptively valid and applicable, as both parties are contracting states from different contracting states to the CISG, and unless an exclusion of the CISG is found to apply, is inapplicable to governing service contracts. In this contract, based on the subject matter of the SLA and the breakup of the software component, we argue. May, may I just ask you the question, if we were to come to the conclusion that the CISG in principle could be applied, would that mean that this tribunal is bound to apply the CISG? No, Madam Arbitrator. The CISG applies in principle to determining the issue of incorporation of standard terms because provisions Article 14 to 19 of the CISG. I think we should even come to that point to ask you your position on that, but there seems to be a question that precedes that one by some uh, legal length and what uh, arbitrator Schwenzer is asking. Probably incorporated into this contract. Whether the CISG is applicable is determined on what choice of law clause might be applicable to a contract. And this in turn depends on the set of standard terms and conditions applicable under the sales and licensing agreement. There's some opportunity to come back to the issue that has in this manner been introduced. So you do say that if the parties had been uh, contemplating uh, another contract that would have been less associated or could be less associated. distinction between the submission that we are making and the kind of software that we ordinarily see. Everything that we use has a software element to it nowadays. From the car that we drive to the iPhone that we use, everything has a software element. In those cases, it is not our contention that it fails to constitute a good under this. Particular obligations under this contract. We're going to the production of the what was contracted for here. I go to a tailor shop and ask him to stitch a suit. It is a service. The fact that I'm finally done getting a suit will do nothing towards characterizing the service as a good. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I don't think we will expand on the suit and the stitching of the suit. Because that will get us into Article 3.1 again, I'm afraid. We need to conclude the, the oral hearings of today. I will not declare the proceedings closed in their entirety because you know the case continues but I thank you today for the argument that you have brought to us and that concludes this part of the arbitration proceedings. Thank you very much.